reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 to the end. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was called up to the third heaven. Well, that was in the body or out of the body. I do not know. God knows, and I know that this man, well, that in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. <coughs> But God knows, was called up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that are no one, no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weakness. Even if I should choose to boast, I will not be a fool, because I would be speaking to the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warned by what I do or say. For because of these suppressing great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three, <coughs> three times I plead with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Let us pray. O God of power and presence, help us to be honest about our weaknesses and to see your blessings and gifts in the midst of our everyday life. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Well, we certainly live in a time and culture of self-promotion. Um, probably the greatest example is TV advertising. Um, someone's not going to put a product on the TV and say, it's lousy. Um, obviously, positive promotion is the heart of advertising. And we know it's the heart of politics, isn't it? It's the heart of running for office. Uh, politicians don't get up and tell you what's bad about themselves. They're only going to tell you what's good about themselves. You find out what's bad about them in the process of the campaign or after they're elected. <laughs> Um, but nobody goes out there running for an office to tell you that they lie a lot or cheat on their income taxes or anything else because they know it's not going to get them elected. Um, in fact, it's usually the negative stuff we tell about other people uh, that helps to promote ourselves positively, doesn't it? I mean, that's the nature of campaigning uh, for political office. You do all you can to expose um, negative things about your opponent and only lift up the positive things about yourself. Um, Self-promotion, I mean it's part of social media now. I mean we don't <coughs> put on Facebook um, stuff that's ugly about ourselves, do we? No, we want to paint the positive light about ourselves on uh, social media. Um, Facebook, things like that, are to promote the positive things about us. Um, when I was in Durham this past week, there was a car in front of me, and the license plate said, number one CPA. I mean, that makes you want to try to find out who they are. I mean, everyone <coughs> wants the number one CPA. Of course, there are probably two dozen other CPAs driving around who see that license plate and say, well, I wish I would have gotten that one before they did. 
because uh, I'm the number one CPA. Um, and it's only after you get them that you may learn that, well, maybe they're not the number one CPA. Uh, there's dangers and arrogance, aren't there? Obvious dangers and arrogance. There's dangers in thinking uh, too highly of ourselves. I remember over the years that I was a, a uh, United Methodist pastor in the North Carolina Conference. And um, every year at annual conference, um, they like to recognize uh, people or churches that were, had done the best, you know. Uh, I'm sure you experienced that <laughs> over your years of ministry, uh, as all of us did. You know, this, this church had the largest gain of membership than any other church in the annual conference. And everybody, you know, applause. <laughs> Um, this church had the highest number of baptisms. Everybody applause, you know. Um, but you know, they never did anything like this church lost the most members this past year. <laughs> I mean, there may have been a good reason they lost them, you know. <laughs> Maybe there was a good reason for them to boast of having lost so many. Uh, I don't know. Or um, this church had the most boring pastor. <laughs> Everybody clap. <laughs> um, so we all know that um, you, you typically don't go around um, boasting in your weaknesses. Well, the Apostle Paul was known frequently as thinking highly of himself. I mean, there's places in Scripture where he says, imitate me. He's not saying imitate me my lousy stuff or my bad stuff imitate my good stuff. That I am a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ and, and live as I do in that way. But there are also many times where the Apostle Paul uh, was very quick to point to his weaknesses. You know, he talked about the time when he was a persecutor of Christians, horrible time in his life, which he needed to tell people about and lift up. Uh, there's several places in the same book of 2 Corinthians where he says, I am untrained in speech. And also in chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians, he says, my bodily presence, they say that my bodily presence is weak and my speech is deplorable. My speech is shabby. And so twice Paul is saying that he's a terrible orator. He's a terrible speaker. Um, and, and he believed that he was, and he just couldn't communicate well. And yet, look how many churches he started and how many people he brought to the faith. And he came to realize that even though he was a terrible speaker, that God was using him still to communicate the gospel. He says in the same verse, my bodily presence is weak. And he says in our reading today that he has a thorn in the flesh. So he lifts up those weaknesses. And he says there are times when I simply need to acknowledge those weaknesses and I actually need to, quote, boast about my weaknesses as opposed to my strengths. Now, we do know from Christian tradition and from what Paul says that he had some kind of thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn in the flesh was. Some say it was his speaking, that maybe he stuttered and couldn't communicate well. Some suggest that perhaps he had epilepsy. There's some indications that, that he was not a very attractive person. There's actually some literature outside of the New Testament, apocryphal literature, where Paul is described. And he's described as a pretty ugly person. He just wasn't attractive physically. Um, and maybe he had some kind of physical ailment uh, that caused him to, to look a bit decrepit. Um, but, but there's some indicators that there's something going on with Paul in the flesh, physically, um, that was for him a weakness. Um, so Paul lifts that up, he says in verse 7, that he has this thorn in the flesh to keep me from being too elated, to keep me from being too conceited. 
to keep me from being too arrogant. Because conceit and arrogance and ego get in the way of ministry. Uh, they get in the way of communicating the gospel. They get in the way of, um, of developing relationships uh, that allow the gospel of Jesus Christ to grow. And so Paul is saying that, that perhaps this thorn in the flesh was, giving me, was given to me so that I would not hold myself in higher esteem than I ought to hold myself. That I ought not to regard myself in a way that is greater uh, than I should regard myself. Now, when we think about that, uh, ideally that's good. Um, that we ought to be aware, not just of our strengths as Christians, uh, those gifts that God gives us that we may be good at and strong at doing, uh, but also those things where we are weak and, and just not able to do what we would like to do or communicate the way we would like to communicate. Um, but, but in this culture, the issue of self-esteem is a big one. Uh, I mean, some people go to, to intense counseling over issues of self-esteem. Uh, I know I, I've had people come to me in the past over years of ministry just to say that, that I don't have a very high opinion of myself. I'm always beating myself up. Um, I'm always seeing myself as less than other people. Um, and so the issue of self-esteem is an important one because while Paul says, I boast in my weaknesses, you might say, well, that guy has a pretty lousy self-esteem. <laughs> you know, it, it, that he, he just concentrates on his weaknesses and, and tends to ignore his strengths. I remember one person coming to me once in ministry as their pastor to say that they were just so depressed, so low in, in how they saw themselves because their father was always putting them down. They could never do anything right. They could never do anything good. But the father was just <clears throat> always being very critical of who they were. And um, that developed in them a, a very negative self-esteem or how they viewed themselves. I think the point of what Paul is saying to us today is that we need in our Christian living to find that balance. Um, the balance between recognizing what are our strengths as disciples of Jesus Christ. What are the gifts that God has given to you and to me uh, that we can employ in our lives? It may be a listening ear. You may be a great listener for people uh, to hear people's problems and issues and, and they know you're a listener. They know you're a good listener. Uh, that you're very intent and honest in your listening and that in that listening uh, you're compassionate toward them. Uh, there may be other gifts that, that each of you have uh, that God has given you that are strengths. But if there are weaknesses, then we should acknowledge those also, as Paul says. Uh, not necessarily boasting in them, but the reason Paul emphasizes it is for the heart of this very reason. And Paul says, that's because God says to us, my grace is sufficient for you. Where you may be weak somewhere in your life, that you're shy in giving testimony to Christ in the community, um, you may not be a good listener, you may not have the words you need to have to somebody who comes to you and needs a compassionate ear. You may acknowledge those weaknesses, says Paul, but what you also acknowledge is that God will give you the means where there is weakness. God's grace is sufficient where you do notice your weaknesses in faith. And so if at times um, you're not a good listener for somebody, then you pray to God, God, make me a good listener. What I'm not good at, you can help me to be good at. Um, if, if, if I'm not uh, a very good person to comfort someone, to say the right words to them, God, your grace is sufficient. You'll give me the words I need to speak, uh, even if they're in Spanish, uh, as long as you learn them in Spanish. God will give you uh, the right words to speak. 
And so that's the message that is given to us today, to recognize where you and I may have weaknesses in life, and to know that God will give us what we need to strengthen us in those vacant places that we might be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God, whose grace is sufficient, that where we recognize any weaknesses in our life as Christians, God will give us what we need to fill that gap. Thanks be to God. Amen.